Thank you very much, all of you. Um, I just wanted to, um, to present um, a bit overtone. We are a research platform, so uh, in a way we, we like to, um, to think about sound art and um, ways also to present sound art. Um, and the idea to, to bring everyone here together is um, was for me um, and uh, for all of us um, the idea to how can we present sound art but how can we take it to another level and to um, how can we um, bring the relation with the visual arts. So you already spoke a bit about it. Um, so yeah, I think maybe this can be a first question. How, for example, Carlo, um, how do you see the, the relation with the visual arts for you? Because you, are, you have an, so, your own entity, you have a, a gallery, mm. and um, how is it in relation to visual artists, for example, in Italy? My relation with visual art? Yes. Strange question. <laughs> I have a good relationship. I mean, not, not your personal relationship, no, no, but I'm joking. But I, I, I mean, um, <laughs> but yeah. they say it better. Hmm? Relation between sound. Uh, yeah. How 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 do you see, for example, the convergences with sound arts and visual arts? How how do you uh, experience it in in museums, for example? Uh, yeah, um, myself, as somebody else uh, told before, like Mr. Carsten, <coughs> and uh, I have a problem with these definitions, with labels, with labels like sound art at all, <coughs> because uh, um, the artist I showed before, <coughs> starting from uh, Julius, <coughs> I think, I think they are artists using sound. And <laughs> the important thing is uh, they have, um, maybe I, I, told, I told it before, um, a, you know, a poetics uh, uh, before uh, and, uh, and, uh, and also after. But <laughs> the sound is an element of this, uh, of this uh, attitude. So, um, Maybe I uh, my reply is not good. Maybe I, I, maybe I didn't understand well. Uh, sorry, sorry. Well, do you see any convergences? Like Convergence? Yeah. Similarities. Similarities or um, the, uh, like, like, like you told me. Um, I have these problems, uh, ju just for, um, was talking about the problems to install. Uh, presentations. To yeah. Um, <coughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yes, this is can be true because, but no, not completely because um, collectors, uh, not many, but there are collectors, they are interested in uh, in these things, and it's just a matter um, to help them to to deal with this uh, uh, matter, <coughs> because uh, okay, there are certain um, works installation very complicated. Uh, Actually, this, they ask for professionals. <laughs> but usually, I don't work with this uh, artist this, with this uh, uh, kind of uh, very structured uh, attitude, very difficult to, to install. <laughs> it's not my, my, my feeling, you know. I, I don't have a good feeling with this kind of things, too complicated. And I, I think that <laughs> certain works, actually, it's difficult to... For, for instance, for a collector to install <coughs> such a work. But in the case of Julius, many, many both. <coughs> because uh, mostly they are very simple um, works. He was, uh, you, uh, very often he was using uh, cups with uh, something inside, like uh, water, dirt, ash, and uh, a loudspeaker inside. And so you have, it's just a matter <laughs> To, to learn uh, somebody, for somebody to learn to <laughs> switch on the CD player, which, which is okay because <laughs> uh, this helps uh, people. Actually, yes, it can be a problem uh, for a private absolute, for a private collector absolutely, also for a 
for a, for a museum <coughs> when, uh, when it's time to, to install uh, such a work with very difficult uh, features, <coughs> you know, machinery at all. <coughs> so uh, this, this, this uh, can be a problem. But uh, <coughs> anyway, uh, what, can, what I can say is that uh, I always tried um, uh, to um, escape from the, the, this definition <coughs> In, uh, in really in terms, uh, in real terms, for instance, um, I very often I um, organized <coughs> curated shows with uh, also sound works, <coughs> but uh, not um, um, exclusively uh, sound works. <coughs> and for instance, in the case of Rolf Julius, there were at least. Uh, <coughs> Three shows in, in Italy, important shows, group shows. <coughs> One in uh, um, Vicenza, uh, in a space uh, near Vicenza. <coughs> One in uh, Rovereto, where when a collector displayed a choice of his collection. And there, were, there was Rolf Julius, Dominique Petitgan, and uh, now I don't remember. <coughs> uh, but this is very important for me. The important thing is that um, to um, bring uh, uh, off the uh, certain works with sound from this uh, <laughs> area of sound art, which actually can become a, a sort of ghetto in a way. <clears throat> and uh, um, in a way I understand uh, for somebody it can be helpful, but uh, it's not helpful for the works and for the artists also because uh, Actually, uh, for me, uh, this is art mm. <coughs> with sound. <coughs> but it's, it's very helpful, it's important to uh, feature, to include <coughs> works with sound in the context of, uh, let's say, normal group shows, let's say, just to... <coughs> because it helps people um, uh, to... Because in the beginning, uh, yeah, now I remember <laughs> for people in 2001 in Torino, a, war, a show with sound, <coughs> it was a new thing, and people were, were a little bit uh, shy. But then I told them, it's nothing difficult. It's not such a big deal, because <coughs> uh, you don't have to think uh, very strange uh, um, meanings, because Julius was not a conceptual artist. He was very immediate. Before I was talking about the children, the children were the best <coughs> uh, public audience for his uh, work because it's a very direct approach. <coughs> mm -hmm. So sometimes <coughs> I finish my okay, just one second. <coughs> sometimes <coughs> I think uh, people, some people, collectors, audience, this label, this category of standard keeps uh, some people um, a, a, a bit away. <coughs> And this, this can be a problem. When yeah. we're speaking about art, that is, I think we should not discuss it anymore because it's art. <laughs> Ten years ago we had a discussion, it's music or art. I think that's not anymore the discussion. That's, that's even good because, mm -hmm. you know, like singing on video art in the 70s, nobody respects that shit. You know, what is it, film? Mm -hmm. oh, let's go to the TV, you know. Mm -hmm. Now every good gallery has as a minimum one video artist in, in their program or more, depends. But uh, the other thing is the institutional thing, what this kind of the art market is the main, I think, institutional form in our time to create uh, the meaning of what art is, like institutional-wise. Uh, I hate that, but it's a reality. When you're going to bigger museum shows, the MoMA, all this stuff, what's he doing? He's dealing with galleries. Like Zwirner have money, and this is a, that's a reality. It will be even nicer uh, when they're dealing all the time with Duke, but it's not happened so often. Like that's the problem, I think. That we can discuss. And in this case, it's important to be part of kind of this art, art life, which is still not so conservative like these big museums. So you will never enter in this because they're creating since I think 20 years an event culture where sound have not any place. Sound needs solitude, sound art needs solitude, time, and this kind of seven space. seconds space. So when you put like the, like the, like the castle, the ZKM, you can say it open, uh, like 50 sound works in one space, 
forget it. It's circus, like a circ. It's a, it's a funny thing. You can get thousands of kids. Everybody is funny, but it has nothing to do with the work. And I think all we are sitting here are working in a respect of artists and not in a res respect of the art market. That's our problem. Looking on Nicole, quitting a really great job, uh, being a uh, short time director of the Montreal Biennale. And after getting clear, I think, what it means, it's not anymore about creating, it's making business. You have to deal with uh, companies getting money, money and everything else. So I think these are completely two different discussions. In this case, it's important to do this from overtone, these activities, also to make it here and not like in your nice new studio building in, in, in Brussels, because uh, not only because the exhibition is here, I think we should investigate more to to speak with the people who are still in the boat doing nice exhibitions. It's not about only sound. The problem is uh, when we are completely focusing on sound art, we're forgetting that it's about art. That means there's 90% shit and yeah, 10% hopefully good. And it's not it's the same in sound or in, in the visual arts, in the sculptural art, in the film. We had a lot of so when we're focusing only on sound and saying, oh, every art with sound is great because we're loving sound art, then I think we're on a completely wrong way. Because uh, it's good that more and more that uh, art form is present. And I'm often uh, we, I'm just creating a little kind of competition. But then you see like sound art students, what they are doing, that I'm becoming a little bit... I ask myself if it's really necessary to focus so much on it. Because when an artist is not knowing anymore how an installation works, but he knows how an algorithm and a max patch works, then uh, you have a nice max patch, or we have not a nice artwork. And I think, so these three tops I want to only focus a little bit, because what is really good, when, I, when we started 18 years ago, now it's uh, when, when you're becoming adult, you're looking sometimes back. You know, normally you're looking all the time uh, in front, because otherwise you cannot produce anymore. But uh, now it's time to look sometimes back, and I see it's a completely other situation. Um, uh, there are a lot of bad people who are working with sound are in the museums already. Um, I know I take no names in my, in my mouth, but <laughs> uh, but there is sound. Looking on the last documentary, there were like ten audio pieces. I don't uh, want, don't want to say sound art audio pieces. But it's, it's open and the people are getting it. But now it's a question of the quality, of qualifying curators, um, and so on and so on. And I think all of us here, uh, besides the, the only artists, have no education in curatorship. Better is. <laughs> I was just wondering, you, you, have your, you have your space in New York. We, I think we all work in a sort of funded environment, which is funded by... Um, by government or by other systems. Um, I was just wondering, how, how, how do you keep it feasible uh, to do this uh, on your own then? Without the details, of course. But <laughs> um, well, yeah, so I, as, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a self-funded space and I, I knew that I wanted to kind of focus on work that in some instances is not the most saleable work. So um, I kind of set up a model uh, where each show wouldn't have to, um, or the space wouldn't have to survive off the sale of work. And so the way that it, it is maintained is um, by me basically doing freelance design work. And um, prior to opening the space, I'd been working professionally as a designer for six years. And so I'd kind of established a, a bit of a resume doing that and um, had made sufficient uh, amount of con connections with people such that I can continue to do work on the side to kind of fund the space. And so it's, uh, in terms of its feasibility, it's reached a point where it's, the model needs to change now. You know, I can continue to do it and it can still function, but um, it, it won't progress it needs to, the space needs to grow and develop and, and um, I need to even focus on doing that more um, rather than doing it. That's a full-time job in and of itself, but then doing design work on the side can be a bit taxing, so. Be cool. 
just want to react to what you're saying because um, your space is um, uh, has a, a, some specificity, so um, it maybe requests some kind of work, you know, in terms of scale, or it uh, could be difficult for you to have like a duo, a trio. So it uh, it frames uh, your way of um, inviting the artist. I'm not uh, criticizing. I think it's um, it's like every place. He, he has a kind of passport. No, 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 no. I think it's. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, as as a curator, uh, we we I think about space. Like uh, Karsten also mentioned that, and uh, some space have. And every space has restrictions. Mm -hmm. And when you have restrictions, uh, you, are, you work with the space. Mm -hmm. So your volume, it's a specific volume of air. So you cannot show any, everything. So it conditions you know, your way of uh, thinking about which artist you could invite. Yeah, definitely. But... Um, but at the same time, you have a program over a year, which is also another way to think about, uh, um, to develop an idea. Like a year exhibition is also, could be seen as a group exhibition. Mm -hmm. So, and also you have this uh, station where you, we can listen to, the, which is also interesting. So, yeah, I think you are approaching different scale, um, a different kind of work. Would this be different in his space than in the world you do? Uh, yeah, hmm. I think uh, the 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 single gallery has other limitation, and sometimes uh, Karsten could show three artists mm -hmm. on different level. So you could show work for six thousand, but uh, show last year work for thirty thousand euros uh -huh. on the introduction fee, and mm -hmm. this is uh, completely other thing than in America. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I really like what. Uh, Oh yeah, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. So and, and it's important to do these little kinds of things, but do it good because looking on the MoMA sound show and they saying we are the first in New York who showing uh, sound art, and then uh, some streets away, or some streets, but uh, it's a really nice intensive uh, place who's showing. Like I think also I like this idea of a group show over a year because the limitation you cannot change in the city. You know, you, I think definitely you would like to be. <coughs> bigger or whatever, but that's, uh, you can do only when you sell stuff, or you when, when you have no time, uh, you have no other jobs, or you have a good uncle or <laughs> Uncle Duck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that it limited your, uh, that's pretty clear. So because when you're working like in a project space without a space like us, you say, okay, this project come in, let's try to get the money for this. So this is in America, I think, imp no, not impossible, but quite impossible. Yeah. Um, and this is in Europe a completely other situation. Mm -hmm. like, um, and also a kind of an art or artistic research platform like the, the Overtone uh, uh, that they funded after they working sometimes together and know each other and uh, living in the same city and so on. Mm -hmm. And focusing also on young artists, giving them a residency place with money, with place, with, uh, with, a, with a presentation platform. I think, wow, I think a lot of people in America would like to do this. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing is exactly this, because this is the, the limitation which the society gave uh, to the whole country. And everybody knows America is a third world country. Come on, looking on the subway. <laughs> but, but, do you, but do you see it happen in, you have the smaller organizations like uh, your organization, but do you see it happen in... A larger scale organization. Do, is there any support for artists to be able to have residencies and productions? Uh, is that happening in North America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely, definitely. I mean, there there are a number of um, residency programs in New York, you know, that um, are exclusive to the East Coast or just like to that community of artists in New York. So, and there's there's some decent funding, and there are also um, a handful of um, organizations presenting experimental music 
in New York, like the stone is still there. That's kind of independent with, uh, yeah, and then of course experimental intermedia with Phil Niblock and Issue Project Room in New York as well, doing really great programming and um, Roulette. You know, there, there, so there are organizations and some of those organizations like Issue Project Room um, has a really great residency program um, for artists, um, many of which, most of which are from in the New York area, but oftentimes they'll, they'll get some international artists in there. So, so there, there is some support, um, but more, more on the music end of things in terms of the type of work that I've been presenting, it's, it's just kind of a different, uh, different conversation. And it's also a conversation that a lot of people are having a hard time understanding how it functions, you know, or what, what that is, you know, um, same way that you were talking about it. It took a while for these these uh, people paying for the shows that you were doing to understand what it was and why you have to support the artists in this way. And so it's it's a similar dynamic, you know. What, what is what is your idea about it? How what is your perception uh, since you were beginning in this field? How this how did it change? How did this evolved? Um, yes, I think now we have the third generation. If you uh, look at the 60s, so, and uh, I can uh, recommend to, you can find it on, on, on the internet, uh, um, I think by YouTube, Lessons of uh, Stockhausen. He gave uh, in, I think, in London. Wonderful. Wonderful to, to, to listen to these uh, lectures. That's the beginning of, uh, of defining um, what is listening. Yeah, that's, it's, we, we, have, we have all these problems that, uh, with this paradox of uh, perception that we have this huge scale for our ears, 10 octaves, yeah? And only one small octave uh, for, for for viewing or visual perception, and it's all this. Uh, uh, it's a conundrum. Uh, we, we do not know how it how it works. Really, really works. Um, when in the 70s, so I, I must go back a little bit. Um, I told you that I was working for the radio, and we and. Uh, uh, I was a friend of the, the head of the department for music, and so the, the musicians were invited. And sometimes the orchestra um, made a revolution. They, they didn't want to, to play what Lachenmann uh, <laughs> said. So, uh, and it, it started in, in the 80s to change, but it was very difficult. I remember in the end of the 70s, I was responsible for uh, uh, lectures in the radio for uh, about biology, new, new development in, in biology science, sciences. And I was often very angry to, to, to see that uh, the scientists um, were transforming everything into objects. And at the end, they were transforming everything into images. Even the, the neuroscientists, they have to have, at the end, images to, to look at. So I said, something, we, we must do something against this domination of the visual. So, um, but I, then, I saw that it was very difficult to, to get people uh, used to, 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 to the new, yeah, this kind of perception, and you need time. And I think that is, we have now so many good artists who are working with sound, but I think people in general, they don't have less time for perception. And the, sh the short time you have, you have to, to put in the, the visual and, and not in, 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 your, in your ears. And it, I think it maybe it's, it's also a form of the culture. The first bridge we have um, in the perception when we are very young, 
uh, the first bridge is our language. Before we, we have language in, in the culture, when we, are, we, we have uh, been born, we are in, 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 the, the, stomach, in, 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 in the, the body of the mother, and uh, the, the, the perception uh, of the ears is full developed in the age of eight months. Not, no, before, four, four to, to five months. So uh, if you look at the language, I think in, in France you have three uh, um, words for listening. We, that your ears must be open, the whole thing around you. Then écouté, that's the same maybe, but not the, the, the very same. Uh, in Germany uh, we say lauschen, that the question, what is that? Do I hear something? Where is it? Is it there? Is it there? Is it there? Even a mosquito in the night, yeah? You hear, it must be 100 and a half meter on the right side there. And the other is 50 centimeters behind me. So that is the second equity. And then entendre, that means I know what it is. I know where I am. So, but you don't have this in other languages, or you have many differences. So I think you need time, and sometimes it's, uh, it's, this time is over one generation. I have a son who is 13, and uh, I, I'm very careful not to, to force him to, to art. And if he asked me today, and if someone would ask me, what is in the moment the, the, the most interesting exhibition in Berlin, what would I say? David Bowie, the show for, of David Bowie. Why did he come in the 70s to Berlin? There was one studio with the newest MOOC synthesizers. Yeah? And there was a studio with, with I think, two wonderful spaces with a good uh, uh, acoustic. One, one last question, because I, I think we have to keep the time a bit in. Um, about documentation, um, I was very struck when we uh, built up the uh, exhibition also by Bernhard Leitner, uh, that he really documented his work so well that we now have uh, pictures from the 70s and uh, onwards um, that are presenting how this was done at that time. Um, also, uh, that documentation becomes an artwork in itself, um, where, it, where it gets an aesthetic quality. And my first question goes to Arnold also, because you're working in this field as an artist. Um, so, and also, to, to, it's open to other people also, because when you present things, uh, documentation, I, we have seen videos, for instance, but uh, it's important to, to keep track of it. Um, but how do you deal with it as an artist? Um, well, mostly my work is um, has to do has to deal with the transition between what is visual and what is audible. So, for me, there is always a, a big importance in 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 visual um, in, in in a visual element. So. Um, when I try to to present my work, it's um, it's it's mostly finding uh, a good a good way to 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 show in details in in different elements of the work, and uh, and a way to to capture the sound like like it's it's like a more like a personal uh, uh, feeling and. Um, yeah, that's that's mostly how I work. Yeah. Do you work on an aesthetic quality also of your documentation, or is it merely pure photo? Or an, uh... Uh, well, that depends. If, when I do it, then it's more like a, a technical thing, and probably a, a, photogra a photographer will have a, a different uh, point of view of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that when we document or we um, or we ask someone to document uh, an exhibition, it's also a question of translation. You said transition, you, your work is a transition between uh, visual and uh, audio, but the translation um, 
it's a suggestion of an experience or it's a limited experience or it's a, a very uh, like uh, subjective experience because the art the, the the sound installation is based on duration and you have to move around and it's rare that you will have a video maker uh, to document an instance who will work mm -hmm. in the room because the the, the room crack <laughs> so but uh, the piece i showed from canta cantario the light and uh, sound it was done by the artist i didn't do that so and he did different he did that at some point he sent me something and said this is the the official documentation of uh, mm -hmm. Uh, and it uh, reflects uh, the, um, the 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 art piece, and uh, but again, uh, the piece is five minutes. The documentation is five minutes, but the uh, exhibition is ongoing for a month, and it will be different relationship between all these uh, uh, elements. So I think we accept the limitation again. Of, yeah, uh, I, I don't mind the limitation. I don't think it's uh, it's important to catch everything when you make a sound, uh, a documentation of it. I think it's important to have some key elements, and I think the the viewer will will fill it with his own ideas. Yeah. And it's the same when you look at uh, a sound piece; you you will make your own uh, interpretation. But then it's also interesting because there are some works, I think, um, so like we are just preparing a little exhibition about sound works in public space, which are ongoing, that is great, but then um, the question is what you're doing with that stuff. So, I mean, clear, we as a curator or producer, we have to take care also of this fact, of the documentation, and then you find several ways to document that things. Uh, for example, with Leitner, it was easy because he uh, started as an architect. That means he made for everything. We have all, even a plan. But for example, to reconstruct this sound tower, even to fight with the artist who wants to make a new work, uh, what is now in Kotrick, uh, he, had, he found the plan, but the plan was not the same like the photo from the documenta show in 1982. That means his son has to make a new architectural uh, plan to build it like it was in this time because 82, it's too long ago that somebody uh, realized, okay, I have to change this because this carpenter was ill or whatever, you know, so that's, uh, but I think to have uh, a lot of photos, it's really important. Um, as you see in our little starting environment that we uh, not showing any sounds. You gave us a nice idea that you're coming from New York, that we can listen the whole time. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, it's, um, I think it's really, when you want to make a reconstruction of a sound work or a sound installation, then it's really, really good to have a lot of material. Mm -hmm. Even when you're not looking all the time in it. Sometimes I have a really nice technician in Berlin who take 100 pictures. For example, the exhibition from Marion Amache, I completely re can reset up when I want. I don't want it, but because she's not anymore there. But we have so much pictures, and it was all technical-wise pretty clear. We have still the whole show, uh, that means uh, the session um, on computer. But um, still the problem is then, did you get it really right in the space like it was or not? Or the time has changed, you know, like I met in two years ago reconstruction or reinstallation of an installation in a space where the artist definitely not thought about that he ever come back in this space because this is a typical when you're working in this kind of ruins or churches or whatever, you're doing one show and that's it. Mm -hmm. And then I said to him, you know, let do it again, this show from 98. And he said, oh, Jesus, what was it? You know, like, we had photos. We had, he, had, he was a visual artist, trained, you know, like, so that means he asked a photographer to do this. But then still, which kind of sounds coming out of this kind? This was even not speaker-based, so it's not and more complicated. So, but uh, I think uh, one of the plaidoyers, what I want to do uh, through the last years, not only working with young and new and interesting artists, clear, but also to find a way to present some uh, kind of key works in this field. So for example, the sound tower from 82, for me it's kind of, to make this reconstruction in Kortrick, it's kind of a work what I really wanted to do, uh, because it's important to get it, because it was destroyed after the exhibition. 
uh, the empty vessels, this famous feedback piece from Arvin Lossier, you can present it. You can present it really wrong, like the, the, uh, the Mocha in Lyon. They have it in their collection and give it to anybody. It's a little piece of text and uh, some vessels and eight speakers and eight microphones. And then you can go to Moonhaus and see an exhibition which has nothing work because there's nobody who have even an idea what feedback is. And it's a feedback piece. So when I did it, I hired the feedback king from, from America, like Nick Collins. He came to Europe only to tune half an hour this installation. So and I think this is important to keep this work re really precise and show key works which are possible to show. Go to New York City, go to, to him, but also go to the, to the Times Square and discuss, is the piece already too loud? Because uh, it was installed when it was uh, full of traffic, and I discussed now with a, a state uh, director from Max Newhaus that he wanted to put the sound, for example, down. Even he's dead, but uh, he, he is a kind of, he has to take care of the work, and the work is not anymore this, what it was. Another example is, again, Rav Julius. Yes, because, absolutely. Because uh, the way he's working with the space, he was working with the space, mm -hmm. is so special that how, I, I don't know how we could see again, you know, even if, uh, because he was not only working with the space, but he, all the works were, were talking mm -hmm. to each other, like as a composition. So I did a project in Montreal, and uh, there was seven or eight pieces, and I took photos. Yeah. And but I was is, not able to record the whole composition. This is really individual also. You know, like this key works thing, sometimes working, and I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, like with Julius. If can I really say? The, the, yeah, yeah. the problem with yeah, yeah. Rolf Julius is huge. For me, I know very well his uh, work is a really important problem because uh, <coughs> certain works, if you uh, will install again exactly in the same way with uh, the right centimeters between the, but in, an, in another space, doesn't almost mean work. almost anything. Yeah. And this is a big problem for me yeah. because, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, if one, talking about Julius, because it's a, a, a exemplary, no? um, it's an important uh, example. <laughs> um, really, um, because I remember uh, he was very much aware of this thing before uh, he died. <laughs> and he was talking uh, to me about uh, John Cage. He told me that John Cage, uh, there, there is a, like a committee of people, person who worked uh, with him <laughs> when he was alive. <laughs> and in the case of important um, proposal to uh, reinstall his uh, work uh, at all, <laughs> they uh, would have the definitive um, 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 uh, word about this. And for Julius, this was important because he was thinking about his own work. <laughs> because uh, actually, <clears throat> uh, I think to install his work in a, in a way that approaches his, uh, his way, <clears throat> you absolutely need to have a sense of space. You have to know him, his work very well, and then you have to make, take a few risks. If you don't take risks, it's better mm -hmm. not to try. For me, this is okay. my opinion. Okay, thank you. Yes, his daughter is overseeing the work, but uh, I think Carlo has a, has a, has made a strong point about this. Uh, I think also, I think we need to f finish it up a bit. Maybe some questions in yeah, the yeah, yeah. in the in the room. It also depicts that um, doing this reconstructions shows also the historic value that begins to come for certain works, and I think that's very important. I think we have. But on the, on the other hand, it's an ephemeral art form, and when it's done, it's done. Of course. It's great. Because I don't want to see a bad realization from a really nice artwork, which I have still in my memory, and I see, what the fuck is that? I don't like this. So uh, we have to be clear, it's ephemeral. It's we are now quarter to six. We should have stopped at five. Uh, so, but still, uh, that was the idea, I think. Um, so maybe one, two questions, uh, if someone wants.